Madam Commissioner, Matthew Ferguson for Commission, Commission Council. Uh, we call the next MIT witness, who is Kenny Chu. Mr. Chu, would you like to be affirmed for the record, or would you like to be sworn? Okay. May, may I please have your full name, and can you please state your la uh, spell your last name for the record? My name is Kenny Chu, C-H-I-U. Do you swear that the testimony you're about to give today is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you very much. Councilor, may proceed. Thank you. Good day, Mr. Chu. Hello. You were interview interviewed by Commission Council um, in, in person on February 26, 2024, and again on March, 25, uh, March 5th, 2024, via video link. Um, do you remember that? Yes. Okay. A summary of that interview was prepared, and uh, Mr. Court Operator, I'll call that document. Uh, it is WIT 14. Now, the, I've called the document on the screen. Uh, Mr. Chu, have you uh, reviewed this document, uh, which is the interview uh, summary for accuracy? Yes, I have. Okay. Have you had an opportunity to make corrections or changes to the summary? Yes, I have. Okay. Are there any amendments or changes you would like to make at this time? No. Okay. And do you adopt this interview summary as part of your evidence here today? Yes. I will now enter the uh, witness summary into evidence as well as WIT uh, 14 um, dot FR, which is the French translation of the summary. I'll now call another document on the screen, uh, which is uh, CAN DOC 24, C A N D O C 24. Now, Mr. Chu, I understand that you uh, received a briefing from CSIS on September 18, 2023? That is correct. Okay. Uh, at the request of the Commission, the Government of Canada has produced a summary of that briefing in a format suitable for public disclosure. We will be reviewing parts of that summary today. In accordance with the Commission's obligations to prevent the disclosure of information protected by national security confidentiality, I will, ask, I will not ask questions intended to elicit information uh, that remains classified. I understand that you may not be able to an answer aspects of my questions. Please simply indicate if that's the case where you cannot answer for this reason and I will move on. In this particular case, have you reviewed uh, this document? Yes, I have. Okay. Do you accept, uh, I understand you also accepted that the document be declassified and your witness, uh, your names your, your name be mentioned in the summary. That is correct. Okay. And without getting into specifics of the briefing you received, does the document provide an accurate general description of that briefing? Yes. Okay. Then I will enter this uh, as well into evidence. Now, uh, Mr. Chu, um, you are the former MP for Steveston uh, East Richmond. Steveston, Richmond East. I was going to ask you to correct me if I got that wrong. So it's Steveston, East Richmond. Steveston, Richmond East. Richmond East. Okay, I'm going to make a, a note of that, not just a mental note. Thank you. Uh, from 2019 to 2021. Correct. You were born in Hong Kong and raised there as well? Correct. You immigrated to Canada in 1982 to complete grade 12 as an international student in Winnipeg? Correct. You are fluent in Cantonese, uh, English, and Mandarin? Yes. Okay. And you hold a Bachelor of Science from the University of Saskatchewan? Correct. You then returned to Hong Kong after university and, um, after university and you came back to Canada with your parents in 1989? Correct. Can you briefly summarize um, how, if we look at how you got into politics now? Um, I understand that at some point in time, you became a school board trustee in Richmond. Um, June 4th, Tiananmen Square massacre in 1989 was the um, 
watershed moment for myself. Uh, that is when I have decided that uh, I'm not going to be one of those Canadians who take advantage of Canada while uh, after becoming a citizen uh, continue to make better income by staying behind. Uh, I have decided at that moment, 89, before I became the uh, landed immigrant, to be a full-fledged Canadian citizen. And that's when, that's, that's when I uh, started my journey in, in Canada. So when I, when I came to Canada, uh, I pay very close attention to what happens, particularly to uh, the national uh, political situation. I have had a very uh, high regard of Canada's uh, political system, uh, be it a democracy. And so I pay very close attention to, to what's uh, transpired, the discussion of the Charlottetown Accord, um, each like accord, and then later on, uh, when I, <laughs> on the day of wedding, uh, I was actually in Hong Kong uh, doing the, the the banquet circus, and um, but it was exactly the time when Quebec Quebecers were deciding whether to leave Canada, the referendum, and so I was so concerned that I actually have my uh, colleague back then in Richmond send me an email, email was actually quite, uh, um, you know, not, not as popular as then, uh, to let me know whether I have a country to come back to. So, so that's the level of concern that I have for Canada. And when, when my wife and I uh, had a family and then the, 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 uh, they, they enter into the public school system, we decided that rather than sitting on the side, uh, be a spectator, we decided to um, move forward and be a contributor. And so I put my name forward to be a Richmond School Board trustee. And in 2011, I was elected one. Okay. And you also, I understand, uh, have been, were a frequent commentator on uh, Chinese language TV and radio throughout the 2000s, um, giving a, a conservative uh, perspective on Mandarin and Cantonese uh, language uh, yeah. TV and radio. That, that is correct. In, uh, coming from Saskatchewan, when I was living in Hong Kong, I became very critical of the lack of welfare system, so I was a bit of a Hong Kong socialist. But then when I came to Canada, I realized the, the tax burden on the middle class especially um, had mandated me to be a more right of center person. So I've decided then that I would support a right of center political thinking and party and philosophy. And at that time I, I choose, I choose that path. Yeah. Okay. And, um, you then, uh, after your uh, tenure as a, a school board trustee, you ran as a conservative in Steveston, Rich Richmond East. Yes. Uh, in 2015. Uh, and at that time you lost to the liberal uh, candidate. Is that correct? That is correct. I lost to Mr. Joe Pesky Solito. Uh, he was um, he was originally a Conservative MP under Canadian Alliance. Uh, he ch changed to the Liberal Caucus in two thousand and two. Um, I was the one. I was one of them. Uh, the campaign team that helped him get elected uh, in year two thousand. Uh, so it was a it was a yes Chu versus Pesky Solido um, campaign in 2015. Okay, um, and you had a rematch in uh, 2019. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay, and you ran for in again in Stevenson Richmond East, um, and this time you uh, took the seat. You uh, were elected uh, MP. Correct. Now, uh, Stevenson uh, Richmond East, I understand, is a riding with a, a large concentration of uh, Chinese Canadians, which make up roughly 50% of the electoral district. Is that correct? That's what I found too, yes. Okay. Um, now, if we could just touch on the 2019 uh, campaign, what I'd like to get to uh, focus more with you is the 2021 uh, election campaign. But so we can have uh, maybe a point of reference or perspective of the differences with 2021. Can you briefly describe um, how that campaign uh, was run in 2019? Um, 
it was a little bit different from 2015. In 2015, uh, much like my 2011 school board trustee campaign, uh, around me I have many supporters and friends who would come to help me campaign. Uh, I, I remember uh, being invited after I was elected as a school board trustee to a um, Canadian Association or Alliance of Canadian Associations gathering. Um, Is that the acronym CACA that we see in your witness? I believe so, yes. Okay. And, and uh, in attendance are all the ethnic Chinese elected uh, officials, mostly our school boards and city councillors, and they presented me a plaque, which I'm still keeping, um, and that was 2011. In 2015, um, I noticed that a few of them has faded off, but by and large, they are still very supporting. Through their connection, I was able to uh, rent a campaign office, for example. But that has dramatically changed in 2019. Um, I noticed that not too many of them had come out in support of me anymore. They would try not to be you know, seen as with me campaigning, going door knocking. Uh, volunteering services, etc. cetera. Um, I attribute that to my commentary with uh, media such as uh, Radio Free Asia uh, in support of um, more open uh, situation in Hong Kong, but I didn't pay too much attention to it. And that was 2019. And, um in 2019, were you um, talking about issues as related to the People's Republic of China? I understand there was the Hong Kong yeah. anti-extradition law protest in 2019 yeah. as well. Yeah. Were you addressing those things on the campaign trail? No. It was intentional. Um, we, we are running a Canadian election in Canada mm -hmm. in October 2019. And it is not... It's not the, the Chinese Communist Party, it's not one of the party that is running in Canadian election. So I deliberately control myself to not to comment in something that has happened in Hong Kong in 2019. Even though there is a lot of pressure coming from constituents of Chinese Hong Kong background, uh, advocating and, and you know asking me to take a public stand, I decided not to. Uh, so therefore, in, during, throughout the entire uh, campaign, uh, you would not find any um, commentary that are proactively giving out from me. And what about your access to the local media in Richmond or the greater Vancouver area uh, during the 2019 election campaign? Unless they ask me for uh, my position and comment, I would honestly provide them. But otherwise, I would not proactively. Canada has. has I'm sorry. Maybe, sorry. I'm sorry. I, 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 perhaps my question wasn't uh, uh, clear. Um, you, I'm not just speaking about China-related issues, but what was your right. access like? Um, what was your uh, your access uh, like to the local media uh, in the Greater Vancouver area in oh, the 2019? Right. Yeah, just at large. It's pretty good, especially uh, I've you know developed a little bit of a rapport with. Uh, the local media, uh, Richmond News, and also many of the Chinese media, printed media, for example, they are still, uh, they are they are aware of me and uh, where I stand. So yes, I have a good relationship with them. Okay. Um, so after, uh, as of October uh, 2019, you were elected um, to the House of Commons. Um, do you remember the first thing you did after you were elected <laughs> to the House of Commons? Um, I, I received uh, an invitation. Um, again, I'm a, a medical commissioner. I, I'm a very opinionated person. And so I have my... As a politician? <laughs> ...view <laughs> on what happened and what is the problem with Hong Kong. Uh, from my perspective, it's because the government there was trying to resolve a political problem using uh, police brute force and not a political solution. And that's why I had taken up the invitation 
to uh, join an international election observation mission in Hong Kong because there is there was a um, municipal election. It's called the district council election in Hong Kong, and in my view, the the open and fair election conducted there uh, would have been a great testimony how they can pacify, how can they resolve many of the political problems. Okay, and in Hong Kong at the time, there was the uh, protests and the demonstrations that were occurring in relation to the, um, the anti-extradition laws, is that correct? Yes, it's, um, it, it entered into a vicious cycle to the point that, uh, you know, Molotov cocktail were being used against police, um, you know, against their police brutality. Uh, so, yeah. Okay. And when you came back to Canada after that, uh, that, that, that trip, did you receive any uh, feedback uh, or uh, from your constituents uh, with regard to your trip to Hong Kong? Yes, I have. Um, I have volunteers, uh, you know, only a month, a month and a half ago uh, in my campaign telling me that uh, they will not volunteer for me in the next campaign. Uh, they will not even uh, vote for me. Whether they, they will vote for me or not, they will have to have a deep thought about that. Um, it was because they believe in their view that I was uh, in support of rioters in Hong Kong. Okay. When you use the term rioters, is that your term or is that the term that someone else is using to describe uh, the people that were demonstrating to I do not agree with that term. Mm -hmm. That term is used by uh, those who are pro Hong Kong government, pro China, mm -hmm. uh, seeing what happened in Hong Kong, especially toward the later part of uh, the protest. Um, yes, that's the term that they have used. Okay. And moving on to some of your work in the House of Commons during the 43rd uh, Parliament, uh, obviously there was the COVID-19 uh, pandemic that struck in March of 2000, but when things got up and running again, I understand that at some point you became involved in uh, the Subcommittee on International Human Rights uh, of the Standing Committee of Foreign Affairs and International Development. Correct. Okay. Can you speak to your time on that uh, subcommittee? Um, Mr. O'Toole, uh, the then conservative leader, appointed me uh, after he became a leader. And um, when I joined the Subcommittee of International Human Rights. Uh, it had already completed a, a thorough study, and the study lasted over a year and a half. Mm -hmm. And they, they are ready to publish a report on how the Uyghur Muslim has been treated in Xinjiang. And so I joined them at that moment, and they then released the report uh, to the House of Commons to uh, I think Foreign, foreign Affairs um, Committee and Committee tabled that to the House of Commons. Uh, yeah, and that's, that's the background of it, yeah. We also study many other human rights issues, of course, as uh, that subcommittee's uh, mandate. It wasn't just focused on China? No. Okay. And on March 27, uh, 2021, the People's Republic of China sanctioned Mr. Michael Chong individually and the subcommittee generally um, as a member of the subcommittee, what did you take that to mean, that you were sanctioned as a member of the subcommittee? I guess, understandably, that uh, that is a very confusing signal because um, sanctions, international sanctions, are very seldomly applied to a parliamentary um, committee. Um, and I remember there were committee members who actually stepped down officially as a committee member, uh, only to be replaced by uh, somebody else. But in all future committee meetings, he would actually uh, attend as a substitute of that of that substitute. Uh, my my reading of that is this is how fearful people are. This, these are Canadian parliamentarian of the Chinese sanction. Um, and coming from Hong Kong and understanding the uh, Chinese Communist Party's People Republic of China, uh, I, I do understand where they're coming from. Okay. And did you take that to mean as, uh, did you take that to mean that you could not return uh, or travel to China? 
Only the um, Chinese state would be able to answer your question in black and white. But did you take that to mean that you couldn't? I, y yes, I, that, that's how I interpret it, yes. Okay. Um, I'd like to move on to um, a piece of legislation that you tabled uh, during the 43rd uh, Parliament. Uh, Bill C-282, an act to establish the Foreign Influence Registry. Um, that is at, um, I'll call the doc, ID KCH, finishing with 69. And we could just scroll through the document. So this is the Bill C-282, excuse me, just go back to the first page. Uh, an act to establish the Foreign Influence Registry, first reading on April 13, 2021. And uh, we can go now to the next page. Okay, the next page. Right, thank you. Um, now, Mr. Chu, I understand that this was a private member's bill that you uh, tabled uh, in the House of Commons in April of uh, 2021. Correct. Okay. Can you speak a, a bit about this bill? What was it? What was the design to do? What was the purpose of, of this uh, particular bill? This is actually the result of a year and a half study of my staff and myself. Um, I believe Canada needs transparency into foreign influencers mm -hmm. and um, to protect our, our interest. So at first we were modeling um, a legislative proposal under the U.S. FARA scheme. But we noticed that, uh, you know, countries such as the Chinese Communist Party controlled China um, and also the general public in Canada has a in, innate um, anti-Americanism built in. So we, we decided not to do that. Besides the FARA scheme, perhaps is too thorough uh, as, a, as a lowest hanging fruit to, uh, to deploy it. So we decided to model, switch ourselves and model after the Australian model uh, instead. In Australia, it's called the Foreign Influence Transparency Scheme. Um, and, and that's how we model what we propose uh, eventually uh, after. Okay. And what was your, what was your particular um goal or, or, or uh, in bringing this bill? Um, my observation, uh, you know, having lived in Canada for several decades, is that uh, there had been a lot of um, shadowy activities happening under table. And, and there has also been signs that I read that are increasing foreign influence in our country. Um, I do not want to deny people's rights to carry out those political activity. Uh, mostly are uh, political lobbying. Um, so that's why I think, you know, the best would be, uh, sunlight would be the best disinfectant so, you know, keep on doing what you do, just as long as you disclose it, um, then, then it's all fine. So your bill wasn't designed to prohibit uh, lobbying no. on behalf of foreign uh, governments? Anyway. Of course, I would not want to do that. Okay. Um, and did your, does the bill mention any specific countries? No, it was by design not to mention any specific country to remove politics from the whole thing. Uh, I, I have designed the, the, the bill to let the, um, the Privy Council officers and also the bureaucrats, basically, to define which countries that Canada are subjected to uh, foreign interference and foreign influence, and therefore mandate, you know, in that appendix, the list of countries that would, would, they, would, uh, they would add those names to it, and it would enforce the, the law against them. Okay. Does your bill make any reference to or employ the terms foreign, uh, hostile foreign uh, state? I don't remember that we have. Okay. Um, and I understand you brought this bill as a private member's bill. And Correct. I understand you're, when you brought this bill, your, the, uh, your party was not the governing party. 
Correct. Okay. Did you have the support of uh, your, uh, your, your party's caucus? Yes. Yeah. And what happened with this bill? It was um, tabled in April uh, of 2021 and uh, went to first reading. What happened after that? The dissolution of uh, the 43rd Parliament uh, pretty much puts an end to it. Okay. With respect to this particular uh, bill, did you solicit the views of your constituents before or after you presented it? Uh, it was the first reading. So the initial proposal, no. But I actually have a press conference, a virtual press, press conference uh, called um, when I when I table that, and uh, there have been very few uh, feedback coming from the you know con constituents on that. Okay. Um, now, if I move to the twenty twenty one general election, the writs of election uh, were dropped on August 15, twenty twenty one, and can you talk to us about? Um, getting your campaign up and running and the experiences that you uh, encountered during that campaign in 2021? Well, it was, um, it was during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. um, and I remember it was just months before that, before um, the parliament rises or, or rose, uh, we started the discussion and the trying to find uh, facts, fact finding on the Winnipeg National Microbiology Lab. What happened under what circumstances? The the scientists were dismissed, their security clearance removed, um, and there were a lot of uh, talk about uh, anti-Asian racism, even coming from uh, the government uh, MPs and even the prime ministers um, in response to our questioning, and. As, as I explained to you, uh, Madam Commissioner, I have a very high regard of Canada's democracy. And it was a very disillusioned moment when I see that the Parliament of Canada had asked four times for um, documents for the National Microbiology Lab situations and the government keep on ignoring it and even took uh, the Parliament represented by the Speaker to court. And then when that didn't work, um, the government decided, or, or the governing party decided to pull the plug and call an election on that in the midst of uh, COVID-19 um, pandemic that we are suffering. So it was a very chaotic moment. It was also a very polarized moment. Um, people, you know, there, there have been supportive of uh, the mandate, you know, against mandates, masking and all that. Okay. And um, when the, uh, so, so if I go directly to the result and then we, we can maybe move sure. back from there, uh, you ran uh, for re-election in, in Stevenson, Richmond East and lost to the Liberal candidate by uh, a margin of almost 9%. Um, obviously you lived through that campaign and have had time to reflect and conduct a, a post-mortem on the campaign loss. Yeah. Um, can you speak to what you believe are the factors that led you uh, or led you losing your seat by a 9% margin only 23 months, 23 months after you were elected? It was, uh, it was surreal. Um, but when we looked at the, the voter turnout rate, uh, and also in light of some of the misinformation that has been um, drowning many of the constituents, uh, we understand what happened a little bit better. Um, the voter turnout rate in Steve's and Richmond East in the past three election has been continuously dropping uh, from 2015's 60.25% to 2019's 56.94% to 2021's 52.77%. Um, um, in other words, over 3,000 uh, eligible voters did not vote in 2021 when they had voted just mere 23 months ago. And my opponents uh, garnered the number of votes that he garnered 
was actually lower than the 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 vote that I had uh, in the 2015 election. The 2015 election in which you lost. Uh, yes, that's okay. right. I right. lost, and, but I had uh, 16,630. Okay, so what you're saying is you had a higher count, vote count in 2015 during the election loss than your opponent had in 2021 for an election victory. Correct. Okay. Uh, it, was, it was very unusual and surreal, but, you know, given the the polarized opinions in China, Hong Kong, um, COVID-19 pandemic and all that. Um, and also with my experience, my, my ob observation of uh, China getting involved, uh, I wasn't surprised. My staff, however, they were, my, my English speaking staff, mm -hmm. uh, campaign staff, they were shocked. And uh, obviously, uh, we'll be talking about the uh, misinformation and, uh, and disinformation, the false uh, allegations that were spreading on social media. Um, I will uh, tender at this time, uh, I'll call up documents, well, I'll tender at this time, KCH 1 through 27. And we'll go through some of those. Uh, those uh, those are essentially messages that you've provided to, or screenshots of messages you've provided to the commission. And just for ref everyone's reference, uh, there is a document that translates much of these, um, uh, or men uh, all of these uh, Chinese language um, text, and it's KCH 70. So if we go to, uh, to KCH 1 to start with, And can we just scroll, uh, maybe zoom out a little bit so we can have a bigger, um, okay. Um, and Mr. Chu, um, obviously you've provided these to the, cam uh, to the commission. Can you, um, I understand that these are uh, uh, dated or there's no date on them, but you've indicated that there is, it was around September 3rd or September 5th that these messages were um, captured? Correct. Okay. Now, if I look at the first message, and uh, I won't impress anyone with my uh, uh, Chinese uh, reading skills, I'm referring to the translation at KCH 70, but that first message at top, um, it says, it, would be, uh, it translates to, it would be so ironic if the Chinese elect an anti-Chinese political party, wouldn't it? And then goes on to say the next message, at, uh, by the individual Anthony, I, or no, just the next message, conservative party, anti-Chinese, anti-China, a garbage political party that discriminates against the Chinese. When did you first start it? When did you or your campaign staff first notice these uh, messages circulating on uh, Chinese language social media? At the, at the beginning of September, that's, uh, that's when I start receiving screenshots such as this. Understandably, of course, uh, I would not be privileged to, uh, to be on the receiving end directly uh, of these messages. Uh, I, I'm not members of these chat rooms and groups. And so there, there is zero uh, opportunity for me to counter and disprove and argue. Um, I think that is by design, of course. Uh, what do you mean by, by that you think it's by design? Well, I, I don't believe, you know, people who would like me to present them evidence why we are not and uh, why, why I believe there has been a lot of disinformation being used against uh, my, um, my party leader then, uh, Mr. O'Toole, like the Conservative Party and also myself. Um, so... You know, if they give me a chance because I read the language, I speak the language, uh, I would be very effective in countering these disinformation. Okay, so you had no uh, a line of sight into these uh, chat groups. Correct. And what I, pro what I have provided to the commission, uh, it's only a sample that has been reported to me mm -hmm. uh, by my campaign volunteers who uh, happen to be also ethnic Chinese and were in this group. 
Right, so it's beyond the, the, the messages that the 1 to 27, there's many more messages, and this is just Definitely. a tiny sampling. Yes. Okay. Um, if I continue on to KCH4. And at KCH4, if uh, the first message is at the top, uh, in the, in the uh, lighter text at 7.47 p.m. reads, what matters is that O'Toole in brackets vomiting for from conservative party is just Trump's follower. Putting him in power is detrimental to Chinese Canadians and to the country's long-term interests. Is that correct? Yes, that's approximately correct for the translation. Okay. Um, and it goes, if I go on to KCH 18, I'm sorry, KCH 11. And in this uh, text, uh, if we just scroll out a little bit, and indicates uh, near the top, it, it is too ironic, a part of the text, an excerpt of the text I'm reading is, it is too ironic that in the federal election, the Chinese vote for an anti-Chinese party, conservative party, which is unacceptable to me personally, China is the motherland of the Chinese. What do you take uh, that to, uh, how do you interpret that, Mr. Chu, as a, as a Chinese Canadian? Um, that fits very well of a global narratives that the Chinese Communist Party have been using around the world, mm -hmm. not just in China, Canada, but also in Australia, the US, UK, uh, New Zealand that they are the only legitimate representative of the welfare of ethnic Chinese around the world, regardless whether you're from uh, Hong Kong, Taiwan, or China, or, or Southeast Asia, uh, other places. People such as myself who has not lived one day under their rule, they still believe they are a legitimate spokesperson, ev advocate for our benefit. So it fits very well with that narrative. Okay. And then if I go to KCH 16, we'll start with KCH 16. If we just scroll out a little bit. Um, this message by a user name or uh, Patrick. Uh, and then to, to, uh, through 17, 18, and 19, If we go now to 18, uh, 17. And I understand here, yeah, so it's at, at, at 17, this is right, or 18 rather. Uh, this is uh, the last th uh, two text, uh, text messages were referring to matters of parliament and beginning to discuss your foreign influence bill, is that correct? That is correct. Okay, and these again, these are messages that are dated uh, around September 3rd or September 5th. That is correct. Okay. Um, what, if I, before I get into your attempts to counter or, uh, or, or uh, attempt, attempts to counter the narrative, can you speak to your experience on the ground? There obviously wasn't just an, an online uh, campaign against you. Um, what was your experience like going door to door, for example, meeting with constituents? It, it was very confusing. Like I said, um, the pandemic, COVID-19, masking, mandates, all these are polarizing issues. Um, but as an ethnic Chinese, I, I have no problem wearing a mask myself, well, even when go door knocking. Uh, doors that have been open to me mere 20 some months ago, uh, as soon as they, they heard my Chinese name, Zhao uh, Jingrong, they would shut the door in my face. Um, and there have been families, uh, a house I vividly remember door knocking, and they were very supportive in 2019. 
that they will vote for me, that uh, they would actually allow us to put a lawn sign uh, on their property. This time when we knock on the door, the lady who opened the door, I even remember her face, she had become emotional uh, with a deep sense of hurt and hate. And she, I mean, I, we didn't bother asking for a lawn sign because she says she's not gonna vote for us um, because we hate uh, China, because we hate them. Okay. Um, now, if we speak a bit about uh, how you attempted to counter the, the narrative and, and respond to these uh, allegations that surrounded your private members bill and, and the maligning of you and your party as anti-China, um, I understand you reached out to media. Correct. Okay. Um, in, perhaps in the interest of time, I won't call up the document on the screen, but I'll reference it as CCC uh, ending in 10. It's a Richmond News uh, uh, article titled, Richmond candidate attacked on WeChat for proposed foreign influence legislation dated September 7, 2021. Um, and uh, it cites uh, one of the posts circulating on WeChat as stating, this bill is going to have extremely negative consequences for immigrants from mainland China. It would also harm economic, cultural, and technological exchanges between Canada and China. And although the bill does not list which countries belong to the foreign forces, considering the source, sourced relationship between Canada and China and Chu's anti-China background, undoubtedly this bill is targeted, targeting mainland Chinese associations and aims to control or monitor mainland Chinese speech and behaviors. Um, why did you reach out to the English language media in, 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 in regards to these uh, social media posts on WeChat in Chinese language? It was a campaign calculation mm -hmm. um, because of lack of support and also means to counter for an interference in our, our writing, uh, particularly targeting mainland Chinese and also Hong Kong Chinese uh, Canadians. Uh, we have decided to appeal to the non-Chinese speaking population in Richmond. Um, the more we expose this, we were hoping that we would be able to earn some votes that would compensate uh, what we have lost in the, uh, in the Chinese-speaking um, side that actually is subject to uh, foreign interference. Um, in another article, this time in the Vancouver Sun, uh, later on on September 14th, you were quoted as saying, um, in relation to the social media attacks that the barrage of falsif uh, the barrage and falsification, disinformation and personal attacks is beyond your expectation. That's uh, a document that, um, I'm sorry, that was CCC C010. Um, I made a mistake in calling up the last document. I'll just reference it. The Richmond News article was KCH 68. So going back to the Vancouver Sun article, um, you, it's mentioned that you, the, the barrage and falsification, disinformation and personal attacks was beyond your expectation. Why was it beyond your expectation? I, my experience in the House of Commons had led me to believe that um, the, the government of Canada has set up, um, you know, all these mechanisms to monitor uh, irregularities uh, during the elections. I was a rookie MP, so I'm not, you know, at uh, an expert in, in site task force and CIEPP, um, you know, even the fact that I, I understand what uh, NC COP means and CIRA means, it's already, you know, top marks from my perspective. So I have a very, high expectation that I will be protected. And, and when things come like a tsunami, to me, I was caught by a surprise that uh, things like that would allow, and the government of Canada did not have any clarification uh, to, uh, to clear my names. Okay, um, I'm gonna get to some of that uh, a bit later, but I just wanna stay with this article for a second, uh, because it, in the article, um, it goes on to cite you as refusing to speculate whether the Chinese government or its agents are behind the campaign. And you're quoted as saying, by observation, the message is the same, but I have no evidence, they, referring to China and its agents, are the most, uh, uh, but I have no evidence. They, 
uh, China and its agents are the most experienced infiltrators. They have done it so or they have done it for so many years. They're not going to get caught. Um, so I understand this to, that is that at this point you're refusing to speculate whether there was a, a state-sponsored campaign, uh, but um, in your interview summary and elsewhere you have uh, stated that the foreign influence interference by China was a significant factor in your election loss. Has your view uh, as to whether there was PRC government sponsored disinformation campaign against you, has that evolved? Well, as we go into election uh, more and longer, and when I start collecting a collection of these screenshots and see how uh, some of the argument, how ridiculous some of the argument is, how, uh, how hurtful it is, um, I, I understand that uh, somebody is activating uh, using emotion, weaponizing emotions of our of my electorates, mm -hmm. and my understanding of the um, geopolitical situations that Canada is in uh, by elimination, uh, it's unlikely that other country, hostile country, would be doing that, and it would likely be uh, China. And uh, you know the fact that I I stop having volunteers coming from that background. It's also a sign to me that uh, somebody behind the scene has actually warned them. Uh, if I may actually put on one point about the Richmond News article. Sure. You notice Richmond News uh, article was, was written by a reporter. Her name is No No Shen. She's actually a mainland Chinese, and she has also um, been privy to many of these disinformation she even received some of them. That's why when I speak to her and ask for clarification opportunity, I do not have to explain any of the background. And right away, she would start interviewing me and asking me valid and uh, um, uh, relevant questions. Um, Daphne from Vancouver Sun, for example, there's a lot of background explanation mm -hmm. that I have to go through. And that, that highlights the difference of uh, and, and the powerfulness and effectiveness of segregated uh, disinformation campaign. Okay. Um, in your uh, uh, witness uh, summary, there was a mention that uh, while this, uh, the, these false allegations maligning your bill and uh, as well as maligning the Conservative Party were, uh, were circulating, um, you referred to a, a sort of a media shunning of you in the greater yes. Vancouver area. Can you speak to that? The distancing of my um, friends and also former colleagues when I was a uh, commentator at, the, at these radio stations, um, newspapers, outlets, and also online forum TVs uh, did not start uh, during the election. It was actually started, uh, you know, when, when the Uyghur votes was, was, was uh, conducted, for example, uh, that had already happened. It, you know, I was not given a chance to go uh, live on air mm -hmm. to explain myself. Uh, the, so during the election, uh, uh, when I have when I call upon a uh, press conference, it was actually very poorly attended. Um, whoever attend and come, I don't even know if they actually have reported uh, what we have asked. Okay. So you tried to reach out to Chinese uh, language media in Canada, and they uh, did not uh, pick up the story or, or, in or give you a Vancouver, platform. Uh, news media is in Greater Vancouver, eth ethnic news media in Greater Vancouver. Okay, uh, I'm going to refer you another now to a document, CCC four. Do you recognize this document, Mr. Uh, Chu? Have you seen this before? This is if a. If you today. scroll down a little yeah. bit so that I can see the title. This is an article in the Today Commercial News. Yeah. That appeared uh, on September 9, 2021, titled Conservative MP Chu introduced the registration of foreign yeah. forces bill, the, the registration yeah. of foreign forces bill to suppress the Chinese community. Um, the article states, as the, in the title, that you introduced this bill to suppress the Chinese community in Canada. Did you see this article at the time? 
Uh, yes, I have. It's hard not to. Um, yeah, okay. I have. And um, can you tell us uh, what this bill gets wrong about, uh, sorry, what this article gets wrong about your bill? Was your intent to suppress the Chinese community? Never. Uh, as, a, as a Chinese Canadian, I understand uh, how difficult it is to be involved to, or to involve with uh, Canadian uh, political activities. And I also understand the, the close relationship with your birthplace, your place of origin. Um, it would not be morally correct to prevent people from engaging in activities such as, uh, you know, keeping in touch with uh, the, the, the former uh, schools and be an alumni association and all that. So it was never my intent. Uh, in fact, um, by not having a transparency scheme for those uh, special interest people uh, who have been conducting their business under table, uh, it actually hurts the diaspora community's reputation uh, at, you know, as a whole. So my thought was by having transparency, by putting everything in, uh, under the sunlight, um, you know, we would be able to safeguard our future in Canada. The article also mentions, uh, refers to you as being anti-China. Uh, how do you respond to being called anti-China? Um, I do not believe I am anti-China. Uh, I do not support the Chinese Communist Party because of the historical reasons since they got into power in 1949. Mm -hmm. That is a matter of fact. Uh, but. China, it's a country representing many people, um, you know, billion, over 1 billion of them, 1.4, I believe. And, you know, it's where my uh, cultural heritage is. And why would I be hating China? I'd like to walk you now through uh, some of the Government of Canada productions that we've received in the last uh, days and, and weeks uh, that the Commission has received. Uh, I'll turn now to um, CAN00144. And uh, this is, is a document, Mr. Uh, Chu, that, um, for, that received a public uh, release. Um, and it relates to uh, the, uh, the rapid response uh, mechanism of the Global Affairs Canada. This is an open data analysis report. Um, it's titled, Chinese State Media and Canadian WeChat Accounts Spread False Narrative About the Conservative Party and Former Can uh, Candidate Kenny Chu. Uh, it states at page one, um, I think it's the second bullet, we do not have clear evidence of PRC-directed of a PRC-directed operation, but we have observed strong indicators of a coordinated campaign as well as the links between the campaign and the PRC. Uh, first of all, have you seen this report uh, before today? No. Okay. Um, the fourth bullet on the first page uh, refers to three of the Chinese language news accounts that first circulated a false narrative about Chu are members of a media partnership with the Chinese state-run media agency, China News Service which according to the RRM uh, may be under the direct control of the United Work uh, Front Department, um, um, which is China's main department for gathering intelligence influencing diaspora Chinese communities overseas. Can I just uh, stop here and make a small parenthesis and refer to the document scan 4821. If we go scroll down a bit to keep going, please. Right, now stop here at for example. Um, so if you see the, the, the bolt, yes, this bolt there, uh, at least three of these Chinese, this is, sorry, this is from the site task force. It's, they, it's the same month, but uh, from an, a different uh, uh, entity. At least three of these Chinese Canadian, uh, Canadian Chinese language news sites that first circulated a false narrative about you are very likely members of a media partnership with the Chinese state-run media agency, China News Service. And here is the, the, the distinction which is under the direct control of, this, of the 
CCP's United, work, uh, United Front Work Department. Uh, were you aware of this, Mr. Chu? No. Okay. I'll go back to the last document, uh, uh, Scan 144. And we can scroll down to page, I believe it's page two. And at page two, uh, keep going, please. Keep scrolling down. Right, now it's a timeline of events. Um, and I'll go, uh, I'll jump uh, for in the interest of time uh, to page seven. Here we go. So on page seven, um, on, on, it, meant, it is mentioned in this report by the RRM. On September 6, 105.9, yes, my radio, a greater Toronto radio station that broadcasts in Mandarin published an anonymous, an anonymous blog post on the open web titled, Please Pay Attention to Kenny Chu's Foreign Power Registration Act. Uh, were you aware of this uh, article or blog post on 105.9, yes, my radio? No. Okay. Do you have any idea why a radio station uh, or a media in the greater Toronto area would be interested in you as a candidate in the greater Vancouver region? No, I don't understand that, why they would have a focus on um, a candidate on Steveston, Richmond East in British Columbia. Okay. Um, the, so you were not aware of this at the time. Uh, it's mentioned in this report, if we keep going down uh, the page, uh, it's mentioned the content of the 105.9 Yes My Radio post bears similarities to the content of the third WeChat group message reported by Glacier Media, and they are likely one in the same. It then mentions uh, a series of uh, articles that were uh, circulating in Chinese uh, language media in Canada one, on 105.9 Yes My Radio. Then another news site, Global Chinese Convergence Media, CGC TV. Are you aware of uh, CGC TV? No, never heard of it. Okay. Um, and the last one was the, t was the Today Commercial News, and you mentioned that that you saw at the time. Correct. Okay. And so you weren't aware of any of these uh, reportings, uh, reports at the time? No. Okay. Um, it goes on to page nine. I think that's page. And it mentions at page nine, um, if we go down there just a bit. that there's also a WeChat account called couponking54.ca, which uh, had 60,000 subscribers, which shared an anonymous article titled, Why Should Chinese, Chinese Oppose Conservative MP Kenny Chu? And it mentions that it contains uh, the, the article, the content of the article is nearly identical to the one published by Today Commercial News. I understand the couponking51.ca, that's something that you saw, is that correct? Um. I'm not aware of the, their existence. Okay, it's not something. It's not a site that you visit. No. Okay. Um, I understand you've you've had a chance to review this report today. Correct. Is there anything in the report that is news to you uh, besides these last uh, uh, indicate these last uh, mentions of the media reporting around that time? There, there is an observation that I would like to draw your attention to. Mm -hmm. uh, in the Today Commercial uh, News, the official publication of uh, that attack piece, mm -hmm. you, you will notice that they have a link to the private member bill C-282. Right. But there was a typo. There was a missing dot, www dot, and the dot was missing. So it was a broken link. It's broken lane, so anybody who is interested to find the truth, they would not find that. Secondly, if you go back to some of the screenshots that I provided you, similar lines of attack were used with that same broken link that was embedded. Um, maybe it's just a coincidence, but it's unlikely from my perspective. Um, I'm. I, I'm aware of the time. I'd just like to cover two more uh, grounds, maybe one and a half. Um, you also mentioned a meeting with uh, seniors in your, in your electoral district in an attempt to 
counter the narrative of the false allegations being spread against you uh, on social media. Can you speak to that? Seniors have a very special position in a fa family hierarchy. Mm -hmm. uh, many um, Chinese family would listen to and respect their opinion. And so we figured with all these disinformation uh, in uh, around um, September 3rd, we decided that we, we, when I say we this time, is MP, former MP Alice Wong and I. Uh, she's a candidate for Richmond Center and I was the conservative candidate for Safe and Richmond East. We, Chu, can you just speak a uh, bit more slowly? So oh, one reminded sorry. sorry, it was probably me rushing you. you. <laughs> Pardon me, sorry. Uh, so the two of us have organized um, a meeting to meet up with these seniors. They were very concerned. And in that two, three hours meeting, they open up their heart. They express how worried they is they, they are if Canada started persecuting Chinese. And I totally agree. We, I even shed some tears with them because I identify the kind of fear that they 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 uh they are subjected to in the end they were all pacified in and they all left relatively happy okay. and what happened uh subsequent to that uh to that to that meeting um picture start picture started to circulate to to myself that the same group of seniors have shown up at my opponent's campaign office and take picture uh with him and also started campaigning for him. Okay. And that was how long after uh, you noticed uh, that you had this meeting with the seniors? One or two days. Okay. Um, we've seen the social media posts uh, throughout the government productions and the documents that are available to the parties and will be entered into evidence uh, as well. Uh, there's the social media posts and the media articles that take issue with you as a candidate and your bill and your party. What do you respond to people uh, that claim that, sure, there may have been some false and spurious, spurious claims about you and your bill, but wasn't it just legitimate debate among Chinese Canadians? When I am not aware of that disinformation, when I'm not giving a chance to dispute, when there is no counter information being provided, uh, when, when no offer is for the audience to actually look at the bill themselves, the link, uh, it is not a debate at all. It's just one-sided propaganda. And Obviously, um, wisdom and great ideas come easy after uh, a storm, but um, in light of the information you have today and the information that you uh, see that was available to the government agencies at the time, is there anything that you as, uh, would have done or could have done differently knowing, uh, could have done differently? I may not have run for office. Um, because as um, an immigrant, it's already very challenging to, to build a life here in Canada. To, to go into public service, it's, it's even more challenging. Um, uh, I, I, you know, when I became a um, school board trustee, I intentionally severed my ties with um, my relatives in China with the understanding that I will put them in, in danger. Uh, and, you know, in, in 2021, unfortunately, it seems like my worry has come true. But then I thought I would be protected by my country. And, and uh, I was deeply troubled, disappointed that uh, I was exposed. And the government doesn't seem to care and now that through the commission, I've learned that uh, they, they, they've known all about it. It's almost like I was drowning and they are watching. Um, and the best they could do, by the way, is to let me know that I'm drowning. I, I don't need their notification. I need their help. 
and, and so that's the overall disappointment mixing with a, a emotion of anger uh, that I have. And yes, I do not believe the way the Chinese Communist Party treating people in Hong Kong or even just general Chinese, let alone Uyghur Muslims, are, are right and justifiable. But I, by and large, I have focused on how I can propose, my party can propose a view, uh, a way of how Canada can be governed better. And, and for that, um, I've been betrayed. That's how I, I see it. Um, just a, a final um, topic that I'd like to cover before just, you need the last just word. One more, sure. one more, one more minor point. Yeah. And, and f as a visible minority, as a racialized Chinese Canadians, for somebody who voice up uh, to for the benefit of Canada in the House of Commons, when I heard hurtful remarks, not just from any MP, but from the Prime Minister of Canada, when we ask about the Wuhan virus, when, when we asked why are we not shutting down flights from Wuhan in uh, early um, 2020, because of our constituents who are from China, asking us why are we exposing Canada to that? So we asked that question in the House of Commons. The answer has always been, you know, mindful of racism, you know, don't be an anti-Asian. Um, to me, as, as an Asian Canadian, uh, it's very insulting, and for that to come from uh, the the top leader of our of our uh, country, uh, it, it's doubling insult with injury, uh, doubling injury with insults. Okay. Um, and you mentioned, I think it was mentioned in your witness statement that that, without attributing any intent, that that sort of played into uh, the, the 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 CCP playbook. Yes, that's what I that's what I said, and I still believe in it. There are some coincidental um, situations between the two. Mm -hmm. The prime minister said, "You know, don't be anti-Asian if you inquire about uh, what happened in in you know Wuhan, what happened in Winnipeg Microbiology Lab. Uh, don't be anti you know Chinese." I don't know if the Chinese communist government had learned of this line of attack and copied it, or maybe it's the prime minister who actually, and the liberal uh, party had actually copied that attack. But the matter of fact is this anti-Asian, you know, Chinese hate and racism line has been continuous um, and used and co opted by, by the CCP uh, in my writing against me, but also as you have provided me with information, even in Toronto, uh, against myself, against my party, against Aaron O'Toole. And I understand that you reported the uh, problem, the reported these, so the, this campaign, of these false uh, allegations circulating on, in media and social media. Um, did you report it to any, uh, you reported that to the, to the yes. party central. Did you report it to, um, I understand you also reported it to CSIS at the time? I have instructed my staff to provide the information to the Party Central, the Conservative Party Central. But yes, uh, because before the election, uh, CSIS had come to me and warned me about, uh, you know, situations uh, that I am not at the liberty to disclose. Um, but at the same time, uh, when, when during the election, when I start seeing these, uh, this information, I remi remember the contact that I have at CSIS, so I put, put, pick up the phone and ask to meet him. Okay, and what time, when was that about, just? It would be, it would be the, f after, uh, you know, maybe, maybe first, and uh, after the first week, it would be in the second week of September. Okay, so it was during the campaign? Yes, it was during the rip period, for sure. Okay. Um, Mr. Chu, my time is up, but I, um, I promised you a last word. So if you have uh, anything that we did not cover today that you'd like to mention, um, I'd like to give you that opportunity. Well, thank you. Thank you, Madam Commissioner. I, I, I thank you for giving me the opportunity. And also a few days ago, we have heard from diaspora communities, uh, the deep hurt, uh, and, and, um, danger situations that we have put in many Canadians 
uh, in Canada by inaction. And I implore you to look, you know, deep into the situations and consider th suggestions and ways that would protect uh, these communities. There, are, like Mr. O'Toole had uh, testified in front of you, there are many uh, communities around Canada that are in relative isolation, and we must, as as a great country, endeavor to reach out to them. Um, the current situation, the current system is not working. As I said, as a drowning person, I don't need to be notified that I am drowning, even if it meets the threshold. Uh, what we need, perhaps as a country, is a mechanism that would clear the air using Government of Canada brand, um, you know, for these diaspora community. That's what I would table as a suggestion to you, uh, Your Honour, and uh, I would appreciate it if you can consider that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Uh, we'll break for lunch. We'll come back at uh, 2.40. Order, please. Alors, s'il vous plaît. The hearing is in recess until 2.40. So we'll start the cross-examination. The first one, um, you're already there, so uh, is there. Acting for the Conservative Party, Maître de Luca. Thank you, Commissioner. Good afternoon, Mr. Chu. Good afternoon. Uh, Mr. Chu, towards the end of your testimony this morning, in reflecting upon your experiences of foreign interference in connection with the uh, 2021 general election, you expressed the sentiment that, particularly as an immigrant Canadian, you felt betrayed. Do you recall that? Yes. Betrayed by whom? By those who are in power of this country, representing the best interests of the country. Can you be more specific? In my view, not wanting to be over-partisan, it's the Prime Minister. The buck stopped there. Um, he let me down. Can I please get uh, CANDOC uh, quadruple zero 24 called up, please? <coughs> Do you have that before you? Yes. Yes. Uh, we heard earlier that this is a summary prepared by the government of Canada of a briefing that CSIS gave to you on September 18, 2023, regarding foreign interference in the 2021 general election, correct? That is correct. And that election took place on September 20, 2021, correct? That is correct. Did you get an understanding on September 18, 2023, why CSIS was only giving you a briefing then about foreign interference that took place for an election two years earlier? It wasn't explained to me, no. Mr. Chu, in connection with the 2019 and 2021 general election, can you please comment on the usefulness or lack of use usefulness of CSIS, the RCMP, and any other Canadian security apparatus efforts to track and combat foreign interference? Um, in 2019, perhaps, it was still at the, at the time of being established and also running through teething problems, et cetera, et cetera. But I participated in the 43rd election, 2019 election, uh, without much anticipation of um, mechanism that would counter foreign interference. Um, and then throughout my two years at the House of Commons, I've learned about these, what I've turned the alphabet soup, GAC, um, it's Global Affair Canada, CSIS, of course, everybody knows, the Site Task Force, Security and Intelligence Threats to Elections Task Force, and then so on and so forth. There's RM, P5, NCCOP, CSE, uh, CCE, uh, ESCC, and then CIEPP, all these. <clears throat> so the impression I have is it's a well-resourced net of protective mechanism. And, and so I gradually developed a um, what is now to me, it's a false sense of security. And uh, that was, that's why I was deeply um, 
disappointed in two, after 2021 election. Okay. When you say false sense of security, did you have higher expectations for all of those um, groups or uh, bodies? Yes, I, I have expectation. Perhaps it's undue, perhaps it's, um, um, you know, unrealistic expectation, perhaps. But I, I, you know, I've collected 15 acronyms that are involved with elections security. And I, I don't think it, um, it's expect too much to, to get a call from, from one of these organizations and offer their advice how to counter um, interference such as the ones that I've encountered. Okay. So back to my question, would you care, am I correct in assuming that you would care if, uh, characterize the utility or usefulness of all of these organizations in relation to foreign election interference, uh, especially for the 2021 election, as not being terribly useful? As of this moment, I would have to agree with that. Okay. Um, after the election, um, in fact, the ceases briefing that you cited uh, in 2023, September, was the very first one that any government agency had uh, approached me and contacted me. Um, I was hoping that uh, uh, Special Rapporteur, Mr. Johnson, would actually have been, uh, been in touch with me, but he did not. Okay. Mr. Chu, based on, uh, on your experiences uh, with uh, the elections that you participated in, two, 2015, 2019, and 2021, the federal campaigns, <clears throat> can you please tell the commission how Chinese Canadians can be influenced and coerced to support the PRC regime, including via the Canadian election process? The ones, the, the immigrants who settle in big cities like uh, Greater Toronto or Greater Vancouver, um, they have a choice of relying more um, on ethnic media from, uh, for, for their updates and their news and their viewpoints. And that exactly is why for over 15 years I've been involved with Chinese me news media because I want to develop or provide a different angle um, for our, our listeners, our audience, our citizen to, to consider in terms of Canadian politics. <clears throat> and, and so imagine if um, for years they develop a reliance and dependency on media sources that are somehow somewhat uh, controlled or influenced by a foreign media, by a foreign um, power, um, willingly or unwillingly, uh, you pretty much will have control of how these people get their source of information, how they perceive an issue. Uh, in previous hearing, I believe, uh, how Ukraine, the war, the invasion of Russia into Ukraine, um, that could have been portrayed, in fact, indeed it has, uh, in some of the Chinese media, to align more with the, the uh, Chinese Communist Party's positions um, than the Canadian general public ones. Okay, and uh, from your answer, it sounds like there's at least a potential for, for influence or control by the PRC uh, how prevalent a problem or pervasive a problem do you think it is in, in, with the current sources? It's definitely a vulnerability. Uh, it's an exposure. Um, all we have power to look at is what happens in Canada. Uh, who is to say, for example, if somehow they do business in mainland China, and all of a sudden, certain owner of a radio station in Canada, the relative gets a huge contract. What happens overseas, we have no jurisdictions, we have no information about. And, and that is the exposure, that is the vulnerability um, of ownership and directing and influencing the, the media positioning and also as well as the, the direction that they are, they are going. Thank you, those are my questions. Thank you. Thank you. Council for Michael Chong. Thank you, Commissioner, no questions. No question. Council for the Human Rights Coalition.
Good morning, Mr. Chu. Good morning. Good afternoon. Oh, good afternoon. Yes. Good afternoon, Mr. Chu. <laughs> <laughs> so you mentioned this morning that now that you've learned that intelligence agencies knew what was happening to you and what you were experiencing, um, it's as if you were drowning while they watched and the best they could do is to let you know you were drowning. And you can let me know if I've misquoted you. You noted that you did not need their notification, you needed their help. What support and protections did you need as you were drowning? As the prime minister was giving me all the alphabets, uh, through my mind, I was I was replaying um, September 20th during the election or at the end of the election or during the election. What would I do if I were told officially by site task force or through the conservative or whatever that my writing has been under for an interference? Uh, I, I would I would have no answer to that because we started detecting irregularity starting like early September ourselves. And, and we have taken steps to protect ourselves. We have taken steps to clear the air, uh, but to no effect um, that, uh, that we found all the work that we've done. Um, so one, one big question I have in mind would be, um, instead of just notifying me, I, that's why I was suggesting to Madam Commissioner that if, if we could develop a, an effective way of communicating to the, the, the diaspora communities that are the target and, and of, of foreign uh, powers exploitation, I think that would, that would help tremendously. And that's what I came up with when I sort of go back in time and think about. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chu. With your leave, uh, Commissioner, I hope to put a document to Mr. Chu today. Um, we didn't include it in our cross-examination request, but the evening of April 1st, we let Commission Council know that we intended to ask for your leave to put the document to the witness. It's uh, the interview summary of Benjamin Fung. It's at wit5.en. If granted leave, I would also ask that it be entered as an exhibit. Can you, uh, can you put the document on the screen? Uh, for the court reporter, it's uh, or court operator, it's wit five dot en. It's fine. You can ask your question. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, and Mr. Chu, um, my focus with this document will just Excuse be, me, Madam Commissioner. Um, we didn't advise. So, uh, Excuse me for interrupting. We didn't advise the parties of the document that's being put to the witness. So maybe if we just give the parties uh, five or ten minutes to review the document. It's the witness summary of Benjamin Fung, which is WIT, W-I-T, five. Uh, surely. But what I suggest is we'll just wait for the question. Okay. And then we'll break to let uh, everyone take a look at the document. Sure. Um, Do you have more than one question from this document? or? It would be a couple of questions. I would, the easiest might be to like go through, I, well, I can, I can make it one. If it's easiest, I can make it one. Okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> sure, I'll make it one. Um, it's gonna be a long one. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> so, Mr. Chu, again, the uh, question that I'll have for you having to do with this summary, um, really what I'll do is I'll, I'm just going to point to a couple of the social media platforms. Um, Mr. Fung mentions in the summary and then ask you questions about those. So okay. if it's easiest, I can just point them out and then we can take a break, perhaps. Yes. Uh, up to you. Yes. Course. Okay. Um, so Mr. Fung's, uh, Mr. Fung's interview summary notes that beginning in September 2021, disinformation about you and criticism of the Conservative Party began being shared on several social media platforms, including WeChat, which we see at paragraph six, if we could just scroll down. And then uh, you'll notice WeChat's mentioned in there. And then also WhatsApp, which we see at paragraph seven on the next page. And you see that, Mr. Chu? 
Yes. Okay. And so from your perspective, are these primary social media platforms and messaging apps for Chinese Canadians, including those who were your constituents? Am I to answer right now? Or? Uh, no, I think that Wait. will break. Okay. Because Sounds everyone good. will uh, review the document or at least the paragraphs that are useful. So I don't think, it, is the document very long or um, no? So we'll take just, uh, just five minutes. Okay, thank you. Order, please. Alors, s'il vous plaît. This hearing is uh, now in recess for five minutes. La séance est... May I ask you just to warn the, the witness that the document has not been uh, filed yet? Uh, the document that you're using, uh, the summary, is not part of the evidence yet? Yes, yeah, Mr. Just, Chu. Just for the witness to know. Yeah, Mr. Chu, that document is not a part of the evidence yet as the person whose witness statement Thank is. Thank you, appreciate that. Part. So, going back to my initial question. Um, we were looking at WeChat and WhatsApp. From your perspective, yep. are these primary social media platforms and messaging apps for Chinese Canadians, including those who are your constituents? Uh, yes. Okay. Um, but it's not, it's not an exclusive list because in China, it, technology is developing very rapidly. Every, every couple of years, you will start seeing new apps. For example, uh, one of them, it's Xiao Hongsu, and, and this is becoming more popular even in Taiwan, and it's now coming to other the, the rest of the world, such as Canada. And so, yes, TikTok, Douyin, WeChat, QQ, but also the up-and-coming ones. Thank you, Mr. Chu. And you mentioned QQ. Uh, Mr. Fung's interview summary, and uh, perhaps in the interest of time, I won't bring you to the paragraphs, but he also mentions um, that disinformation about you and or criticism about the Conservative Party and Aaron O'Toole was published by Chinese language media outlets and news websites like Today Commercial News, QQ, Chinese Canadian Voice.ca, The Global Times, and Rise Magazine. From your perspective, are these primary news sources for Canadian, uh, Chinese Canadians, including those who are your constituents? Yes. And from your perspective, was the spread of disinformation about you and criticism of the Conservative Party through these particular social media platforms and news outlets, as well as what you have described as your effective shunning from ethnic news media in the greater Vancouver area in particular, significant? Yes, although the list of media is not exclusive, so there are other medias that uh, are, are engaging more into self-censorship, for example, that also play into the whole game as well. And these are Chinese language? Correct, outlets. correct. Okay. If we could turn to, scroll down to paragraph 10 in the witness summary. In paragraph 10, Mr. Fung says, reproducing the same text nearly verbatim is very typical of CCP propaganda. A small deviation from a source text might prompt repercussions against the author if it's thought to convey the wrong meaning. As a result, authors will often hesitate to make even small changes and will hew closely to the original text. Um, in your review of the disinformation shared about you, did you notice a pattern in similar messaging, almost verbatim text among, I don't know, a number of uh, indirect, this yes. number of, yes? Yes, I have, and uh, they, they share similar attack um, arguments, and also even the uh, insults are identical. Thank you. Based on your understanding of the Chinese government's treatment of those who oppose its actions, would you agree that your public stance on China issues and your support or perceived support of Hong Kongers and Uyghurs was likely one of the reasons that you became a target of the Chinese government? Yes. Those are all my questions. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you. Mr. Chief. Attorney General. Good afternoon, sir. My name is Gregory Jemanakis. I'm counsel for the Attorney General. Good afternoon. I have uh, four quick areas I would like to touch upon to just clarify the evidence. 
I'm going to ask the court reporter to pull up your witness statement, which is 000014. In your evidence this morning, sir, you said, and please correct me if I'm wrong at any point, that foreign interference activities was a factor in the loss of, in your riding in general election 2021, correct? Correct. More specifically, foreign interference from China, from the PRC. And it, did I also understand you to say that foreign interference was not the only factor that, is that might have contributed to the loss? That is correct. Just like any other elections, there are multiple factors at play. Thank you. Um, I'm going to ask uh, if we can turn to paragraph 41 of your witness summary. And I just want to clarify, sir, that in addition to the evidence that you gave this morning, does this paragraph, is this paragraph still consistent with your view? And the paragraph reads, I'm not going to read the whole paragraph, or I will for the record, although foreign interference by China was a significant factor in his election loss, Mr. Chu acknowledges it was not the only factor. Other factors likely contributed to the outcome. The election took place in a very politically polarized climate. Excuse me, can yeah. we just, uh, sorry, it's about it's, translation. Going yes. fast. Okay. <laughs> I'm not going to read it, sir. Can you just confirm for us that the contents of this paragraph still remains true, given your evidence this morning? Yes. Now, sir, I want to talk a little bit on another topic about information flow. And I heard you say this morning that some of the concerns about misinformation you raised with the national campaign. So with the campaign of the Conservative Party of Canada that was managing the national campaign. Is that is that right? The Conservative Party of Canada has provided a lot of leeway for local campaigns to conduct itself. Um, but we do have maintained a conduit to provide information to communicate with the central com campaign. So my staff, for example, my campaign manager, he has participated in that mechanism. He's the point man. Okay. Did you understand? Did you, did you know if the campaign passed any of the concerns that your staff expressed to the site task force? Not directly, for sure. Do you, do you expect? However, we, I have instructed my staff to talk to the cam central campaign about our situation that we're facing. Okay, I get that part. I'm just asking if you understood, did the campaign ever tell you they passed your concerns along oh, to the site task force? The conservative headquarters, whether they have. Yes. Um, no, I don't think I have heard from the central campa campaign whether they have or not. Thank you. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about um, and appreciating that I do not want you to get into any classified information whatsoever. Am I correct that you met with the Canadian Security Intelligence Service for a security awareness briefing prior to GE 2021? That is correct. And did you also meet with them during the writ period to discuss other matters? Yes, per my request. Your request. I call them and I have them come to my campaign office to talk to. Did you have any other meetings with the service during the writ period other than that one occasion? No. I, I, I feel like I need to clarify Please. that the, um, the meeting that ceases contacted me while I was still uh, an MP prior to the election, of course, uh, they would not explain to me why they want to talk to me. They sat down, only asked me questions, and I provided answer, and that was it. All right. I'm not going to get into the specifics yeah, of it, yeah. and I, I don't want you to. I, I, I would not be able to answer you that. Yep. Oh, that's fine. Um, my last, well, last or second last topic is, we were talking a little bit about the misinformation campaign on WeChat and other Chinese language media. Do you recall that discussion? And my friend just took you to excerpts from the testimony and identified certain media organizations and social media platforms. Site task force. Yep. No, no, the platform oh, where RM. there was misinformation. Okay. So as observed by RM. As observed by your campaign. By my campaign. Yes, yes. yes. The screenshots. And I understood you to say that you could not 
well, let me ask a different question. As a candidate, do you agree that um, voters may not understand a party's position or a party's platform and that efforts need to be made to explain and clarify positions and platforms? I think so, yeah. It would be it would be uh, it would be the job of a candidate, for example, to articulate that. Sure. And it's I'm going to suggest to you, and I think it's not un it's not contested that it's it's not only the job of the candidate. It's the job of the candidate. It's the job of the party. It's the job of the national and local campaigns. Is that fair? Yeah, I think so. Just like the government of Canada is responsible for clarifying untruth about legislative matter that is in the House of Commons, for example, right. Bill C-288. And isn't it also true that people and individuals can express opinions that you may not agree with or that others may not agree with, but that's part of the electoral process? Oh, definitely, sure. And it's part of the democratic process. Yeah. You just have to say yes or no for the record. Yes. Yes. And my question to you is, you become aware of these um, communications that are taking place on WeChat, and I heard you say you didn't have an ability to engage in the debate because you weren't a user. Is that fair? That's right. I, I don't use WeChat. So how did you become aware, and could those who made you aware have... And through my volunteers and my supporters, they used WeChat and they have seen all these disinformation being circulated. And could your volunteers, I'm going to talk about volunteers in particular, could the volunteers on your campaign have engaged or have put forward your correct position or clarified your position or explained your position on these platforms? I believe you are searching a rational discussion uh, in the heat of a very emotionally charged disinformation campaign, that would be nearly impossible. The very fact that uh, the group of seniors who came to me, came to us, uh, myself and MP, former MP Alice Wong, we explained to them, we thought we have quote unquote disarmed them, and we clearly articulated what exactly my proposal, Bill C-282, it's supposed to do, that did not help. And my last question is this. You, you made a very conscious effort to do that with the seniors in a very emotional meeting, but no similar effort was made on the, on the WeChat platforms. Am I right? If I have it wrong, please tell me I'm wrong. No, that, you, you are correct. Okay. You Thank you very correct. much, yep. sir. Thank you. Re-examination, Mr. Ferguson. If you just allow me a moment, Madam Commissioner. <laughs> Madam Commissioner, I was wondering if I could add just one sentence to that very last answer. Yes. Okay. It, it may save a re-examination. <laughs> <laughs> the Member of Parliament, the House of Commons, has prohibited us from using WeChat when I was a member of parliament because of security concern. Um, it was just weeks ago I was an MP, and then during election, I'm not. Uh, and knowing the danger that I'm submitting myself to, we have made a conscious decision not to uh, get a WeChat account nor engage with people on WeChat. Thank, Thank you. you. No further questions. Thank you. So. Uh, I think we just need five. Sorry, Madam Commissioner. Yeah, this it's, uh, is, uh, we just need five minutes to switch to the next uh, to switch witness. to the next witness. Thank you very much, Thank you, uh, Mr. Chu, and uh, good luck. Thank you. Order, please. Alors, s'il vous plaît. The hearing is in recess until uh, five minutes.